checked out your uh, film, oh, and okay. um, what's actually surprising, this is all, is this truly all real? <laughs> Yeah, you know, everyone's always like, how much of it is actually true? And I'm like, well, you know, what I wanted to do is write from a very authentic emotional place. So I would say that all the events actually happened at some point, but it's really like 30 years of experience condensed down into a one-year narrative just for the sake of storytelling. And, you know, there are some people who just didn't really want their name involved, so I had to make a character up who maybe was the, the amalgamation of a few different people. So, uh, so... You're talking about, you, you were in this life for 30 years. It's not like the movie, but it's like all, yes. the, all that, all the drug dealing, all, all the uh, street stuff and everything yeah, like that? Yeah, you know what? I stopped drug dealing early on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I started dealing software later. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, that, that part was short-lived, thank God. I mean, once it became illegal, it was just sort of like it doesn't really make much sense to do it. And I think as, as you grow up, as your frontal lobe engages, as you can make better decisions, um, you know, you realize it's not really the type of life that you want. So when you developed the story, obviously it was based, based off on, the, on those days, how did you want to develop the narrative, narrative to, uh, to make it interesting for an audience? Well, like I said, you know, I took a lot of creative license just in terms of, you know, taking, you know, picking and choosing life events from different aspects on, on my life timeline. Um, and, and for the sake of, you know, telling a good story, condensing it down so that it was, you know, a, a solid narrative. Um, with, with uh, So, you know, some of it, I, I made up a couple of characters, some people I had to turn, you know, a boy into a girl, that type of thing. Um, just for film, you know, for the reasons of film language. So I, I, I was about to say, so there was, there was no real Tommy that died. There was a real Tommy, and oh. I definitely have had experiences with with with, um, with losing loved ones. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But the real the, the real character he's based on is alive and well. He lives in Hillsboro. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's good. Yes, yes. That's, that's certainly good news. But there were there were definitely people who I lost along the way. So I wrote from a very real sort of emotional place. So when. Um, when did, when you came across like the first time, basically said, you know what, I want to tell my story on onto the big screen. I'm sorry. When did I? Yeah. When when did you? You know, it was like a slow burn. You know, there was a seed that was planted. I you know I had a, a, a nice career in Silicon Valley, and I found myself in a situation where I, I didn't have to do that for a living anymore if I didn't want to. So, you know, I sort of stumbled around and really asked myself a lot of hard questions in terms of what I wanted my legacy in this world to be. And um, I founded a nonprofit called Grow uh, for global resiliency outreach work. And we basically went into the inner cities and we, we did process groups for at-risk kids, um, specifically in middle school. So I found that there was like a real treasure trove of stories there. You know, I mean, these kids endure all kinds of horrific shit on a daily basis. You know, their their mom is in jail, or their mom's a prostitute, or there's tons of domestic violence, or they've had a loved one, you know, get shot and killed in front of them. So I, I wanted to give them a venue to be able to talk about these very real challenges and to be able to kind of free up the emotional space to grow and to provide them with some tools to you know to help them along the way and I think you know there's a huge taboo against telling that kind of stuff you know like we're all like we don't tell our business outside of the store outside of the home and I found that the way to uh, embolden them or to give them you know the, the permission to be able to own their own stories and to be honest was to tell my own story you know with uh, uh, you know, warts and all. You know, like uh, in the movie, she's not always a likable person. You know, she's kind of crazy and she's stupid shit. She hurt people. You know, and I think it's important to be able to own that along the process, along with your gifts, um, because I think that's the way that we are able to kind of fortify our, our better angels to shut down our demons. Now, I know it's a somewhat of a fictional story, but is there is there anything that uh, you kind of like exaggerate um, for, for the sake of the film? Oh, sure. There, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, largely the way Annie played Angie was, was largely true. Um, I mean, it's hard to look back over 30 years and be like, is that really what I was like as an 18-year-old? I mean, I was pretty reckless. Um, you know, I think that aspects of her, you know, she... I, I probably came across as a little more abrasive than she did, you know, because I was very focused on getting my way, you know. I think when you're 18 years old, you're kind of like 
a toddler in a, in a grown-up's body, you know, and I think that there, there's a lot of impulsive kind of behavior that, that comes from that. Um, how did you recruit uh, Annie to play uh, play you, and how well do you think she did? I think she did a phenomenal job. Um, she actually, you know, we read a lot of actresses, and she actually defied convention and reached out to me directly, which you know you're not supposed to do. But I guess I had my my email address on the on the title sheet of the script that she read, and she wrote me this really beautiful email about how um, how much the script affected her, how she you know really resonated with her deeply, and she offered to fly herself out to the West Coast to read for me. So she was actually the first person, the first actress I read for the role. And initially, I just wasn't sure, and, and largely it was because she's so little and young, you know. Um, she's like 85 pounds. She's this tiny little little girl. And I, I never thought of myself as being that vulnerable or that fragile. Um, you know, she's, got, she's very tough also, but it wasn't until I was like eating dinner across the table from my daughter who was a teenager and my stepdaughter who was a teenager that I realized you know, this character is really more their peer than, uh -huh. than what I have concocted in my head. So at that point, it was an easy decision to cast Annie. What about uh, the decision for you to direct the film? I mean, was that uh, kind of uh, surreal or difficult? I think every every stage of the process was difficult, you know, like writing it, I was like, maybe I should hire someone to write it, and then I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm just going to write it myself, and then I was like, oh, I'll raise money, you know, so um, by the time we got to that point, I was like, you know, I'm going to direct this, I, I have the vision, um, I think working with the actors is kind of the same as working with the kids in my nonprofit, just giving them a safe space uh, to kind of play in the dark and to own their demons. So that was, directing I think was the, my, my, my biggest joy in the whole process. You know, I loved it. I loved working with um, my production design team, my costume team, my hair and makeup. It, it's, it's really a collaborative um, effort and it's, it's very much like family. So for me it was a really beautiful process and I love working with the actors. To, to create the characters. And all the actors that you, you have here are all veteran, uh, experienced actors. Yeah, by and large. By and large, that you know, they've, they've got acting chops. So yeah. it was a, it was a pleasure to, you know, I, I learned that I didn't have to, like, be super hands-on. Like, I just needed to give them the backstory, give them the information, and, and clear the space in order for them to really, you know, live, you know, breathe life into the characters. And they, they did a beautiful job. You wore you wore so many hats uh, throughout this entire project, and not and not only that, this is an indie project yourself. Yes. So, what do you suppose was the most difficult thing that uh, that you had to endure? Um, each step is is fraught with challenges and obstacles, and it's and it's all hard work. Um, I think for me personally, the most challenging aspect was to get it seen. You know, because it was done, and I thought, okay, I'm going to go to all these different festivals, and it was it was a little challenging to get it in initially. I think. The feedback that I got was that it, this movie doesn't fit cleanly into a box, you know, and, and I got feedback like, well, it's Asian, but it's urban, which is code for black, and they were like, we don't really know what to do with that. So and I thought, oh my gosh, I think the, the, the curation process is very specific, and some, and, and part of the life, it was just, it's a hard time fitting it cleanly into one box. So that was very frustrating, it was painful, you know, it felt like personal rejection. Um, but, you know, found a great home to premiere um, at Camp Fest in San Francisco, and they were so supportive, and, um, you know, the, the community there is, is amazing, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic tribe, so, you know, I'm thrilled with the way things worked out. Why do you suppose it's so important to play it here at the Asian Pacific Film Festival? Well, L.A. is my home now, so, you know, I have all my people here, and all the actors are here, and I think that, you know, it's an important time for us as Asian American filmmakers, you know, like, we, we have a powerful voice, and it's really time for us to kind of join hands and kick the door down and be heard. Do you think I'm being, like, a female Asian director, a writer, and producer is an advantage? No. <laughs> I think it's a gross disadvantage. <laughs> but I think, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to gripe about it. I, you know, I'm a fucking Asian woman, you know, and it's who I am. I don't really think about it and say, like, oh, is it more difficult or not? It just, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. But I do think that we have a distinct voice. We, you know, we see the world through a specific lens, and, and that's a voice that deserves to be heard. And um, let me start wrapping it up um, for yourself. Um, what 
after after this um, movie premieres, are you still going to do the festival circuits, or do we ha do we have another project in, in the works for yourself? I don't. I have a couple of other projects that I'm really excited about. One is called Blue Blooded, and it's sort of a gritty New York cop indie told through the lens of an Asian American cop. Um, you know, I'm kind of tired of opening up my news feed and seeing that yet another kid of color has been shot dead, and we as a society are largely apathetic about it. You know, I, I, so I really want to take a close look at what conspires to make that okay. Um, so it's told through the lens of the cop as well as the kid who ultimately gets shot. Um, I also have another project, a TV project that I'm starting to pitch around called Madam Mommy. It's about a, a woman who on the surface has this very idyllic life in, in suburbia, you know, but she feels very unfulfilled, she's disconnected, she thinks she's doing right by her daughter, her daughter falls victim to, to suicidal ideation, she gets very anxious and depressed, she launches this big exodus out of, out of Stepford. And um, the daughter, so it's the daughter's recovery journey, and the mother decides she's going to become a madam and run a prostitution ring in order to fund their life. So I'm excited about those, and then we've got more festivals to, to play at as well. Awesome. Um, and one quick question. I think the original title for the movie was Angie X, right? No, it was Cardinal X, and then, Cardinal? then we switched it to Angie X, and then I said, fuck it, I'm switching it back to Cardinal X. <laughs> <laughs> so it was always Cardinal X. Oh, so it's always Cardinal X? Yeah. And, and, and where, 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 how did you develop that name? So Cardinal is the mascot for the school, and X is ecstasy. Oh, right. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yes. Hey. Thank you very much. Hey, Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's, it's a pleasure. A, it's a great movie. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Thanks. You. And be sure to keep your browsers tuned to lrmonline.com for the latest news, bochinche, and analysis.